All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have the integral of x to the fifth power dx. And so in order to solve this, we're going to need to use the power rule for integration. And so this is going to be equal to x to the power of five plus one, right? You're going to add one to your exponent. So you're gonna have five plus one. And then you're going to divide by that power, five plus one. And then of course, you don't wanna forget your plus c term. And if we simplify this, we'll have that this is equal to x to the sixth power divided by six plus c. And that would be the antiderivative or the answer to this integral. So then let's move on to our second example here. We have the integral of negative 21 divided by x to the fourth power. And so in order to solve this, the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite our integral. I'll start by pulling out this negative 21, right? We can pull out constants to the outside of the integral. And so I'll start by writing negative 21 multiplied by the integral. And then let's move this bottom term, x to the fourth power, to the numerator by giving it a negative exponent. So we'll have x to the negative fourth power dx. And now we can see that we can use the power rule for this term inside our integral. And so we'll have that this is equal to negative 21 times x to the negative fourth power plus one divided by negative four plus one. And then we'll add c. Don't forget to add that c. And so then if we simplify, this will be equal to negative 21 times x to the negative third power divided by negative three plus c, right? Negative four plus one is negative three and negative four plus one in the bottom here is also negative three. And so then if we wanna simplify this one more time, notice that negative 21 divided by negative three will be positive seven. So we're gonna have seven and then we'll move this term with a negative exponent to the denominator. So we'll have seven divided by x cubed and then plus c. And so this will be the answer to that integral. The integral of negative 21 divided by x to the fourth power is seven divided by x cubed plus c. Let's look at another example. Next, we have the integral of this polynomial here. We have 12x cubed minus six x squared plus two. And if we're gonna find the integral of this function, we'll have to do each of these terms separately. And so while you could write it like this, you could rewrite this to be the integral of 12x cubed dx minus the integral of six x squared dx plus the integral of two dx, right? We just split up this integral to be the integral of each one of these terms, which we are allowed to do. That is one of our rules for integration. We can just skip this step entirely though, and just move into taking the integral using our integration rules for each one of these terms. And so if we start with our first term, we'll add one to our exponent. So we're gonna have 12 times x to the fourth power, right? We added one to this power, and then we're gonna divide by that four. Then we're gonna subtract six, and then we'll take the integral of x squared. And so we'll add one to our exponent. So we'll have x cubed divided by three, right? We added one to our exponent to get three and then divided by that exponent. And then of course the integral of a constant is just going to be equal to that constant times x. So we have two x in this case. And then don't forget to add plus c. And so if we simplify this, we know that 12 divided by four is three, so this will be equal to three x to the fourth power. And then we know that six divided by three is two, so we'll have minus two x to the third power plus two x plus c. And so then this would be the final answer to our integral here. Let's look at another example. Next we have the integral of the quantity x plus one times the quantity two x minus three. And so in order to do this integral, we're going to need to FOIL the terms or multiply these two quantities together. And so if we do that, we'll have that this is going to be equal to the integral of x times 2x. So we'll have 2x squared and then x times negative three. So we'll have minus three x. And then we'll have one times 2x. So we'll have plus two x. And then one times negative three. So we'll have negative three. And then we'll put all those terms in parentheses and multiply by dx. And so now we have two like terms here that I'd like to add before we move on into our integration process. So I'll add negative three X and two X, and then we'll have that this is going to be equal to the integral of two X squared minus X minus three DX, right? Negative three X plus two X will be negative X. And so then if we take the integral of this function using our rules, we'll have that this is equal to two times x to the third power divided by three, right? We added one to our exponent to get three and then divided by three minus 
the integral of x. And so in this case, our power is one. So we're going to add one to that exponent. So we'll have x to the second power divided by two, right? One plus one is two. And then we divided by that power. And then we'll subtract 3x, right? The integral of a constant is just that constant multiplied by x. And then don't forget your plus c. And so then if we were to simplify this, we would have that this is equal to two times x cubed divided by three minus x squared divided by two minus three x plus c. And so that would be the answer to this integral. Let's look at another example. So here's a tricky example. We have the integral of x squared plus x plus one divided by the square root of x dx. And so how are we going to go about this integral? Well, I think the first thing we're going to want to do is to change the square root of x to be x to the one half power. I think that should be our first move. And so I'll rewrite this. We'll have that this is equal to the integral of x squared plus x plus one divided by x to the one half power dx. And so now I think the next thing that we should do is split this up into three different fractions, right? We have each of these terms being divided by x to the one half power or the square root of x. And so we can actually split them up and it'll look like this. We'll have that this is equal to the integral of x squared divided by x to the one half power plus x divided by x to the one half power plus one divided by x to the one half power. And of course that would all be multiplied by dx. Right, so all we did was take this denominator and divided it into each term and separated them. And so then our next step is going to be to move the denominator to the numerator by giving them a negative exponent, right? So you're gonna have x squared times x to the one half power, but that one half power will be negative. And then that would be the same for these two terms as well. And so we'll have that this is equal to the integral of x squared times x to the negative one half power plus x times x to the negative one half power plus x to the negative one half power, right? We'd be multiplying it by one, but that would just be the same thing. And so then we'll close this and multiply by dx. And so then if we continue our work up here, what would be our next step? Well, we're going to want to combine our powers here for x. Remember that if you multiply two terms like x squared and x cubed, you would get x to the fifth power because you're adding the exponents. So to multiply these terms where we have the same base, we're going to want to add their exponents. And so then we'll have the integral of x squared times x to the negative one half power. So we're gonna be adding two and negative one half, and that will give us x to the three halves power. And then we're going to add x to the first power times x to the negative one half power. So one plus negative one half is positive one half. So we'll have x to the one half power, and then we don't need to change anything for our last term. So we'll just have plus x to the negative one half power, and then these are all multiplied by dx, of course. And so now we're ready to finally use the power rule for integration on each of our terms in this integral. And so if we do that, we'll have that this is equal to x to the three halves power plus one divided by three halves plus one plus x to the one half power plus one divided by one half plus one. And then we'll have plus x to the negative one half power plus one divided by negative one half plus one. And then we'll add C. And so now let's simplify this a little bit. We're gonna have that this is equal to x to the five halves power divided by five halves. And then this will be added to x to the three halves power divided by three halves. And then we're gonna have plus x to the positive one half power divided by positive one half plus c. Right, so all we did was add up our exponents and our denominators. And so then we can simplify these terms by remembering that when you divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. And so that means that this would be equal to two fifths times x to the five halves power, right? We just multiplied by the denominator flipped. So we have two on the top and five on the bottom. That's the reciprocal. And then we're gonna have two thirds x to the three halves power, and then plus two times x to the one half power plus c, right? So the reciprocal of one half would be two divided by one, which is just two. And so then we can actually rewrite this one more time and add that this is equal to two fifths times x to the five halves power plus two thirds times x to the three halves power plus two times the square root of x plus c, right? I just changed this x to the one half power to the square root of x. You don't have to do that, but I decided to do that here. And so then this would be the final answer to our integral. Let's look at another example. 
All right, so now we're going to start looking at some of our trig functions. So we have the integral of 8 times cosine x minus 5 times sine x. And so we know that the integral of cosine x is equal to sine x plus c. And we know that the integral of sine x is equal to negative cosine x plus c. And so if we do each part separately, we just have to remember to multiply our constants by what the integral is. And so we'll have that this is equal to eight times the integral of cosine x, which is sine x. So we'll have sine x, and then we'll be subtracting five times the integral of sine x, which we know is negative cosine x. And so we'll multiply by negative cosine x. And then of course, don't forget to add c. And so then if we simplify this, this will be equal to eight times sine x plus five times cosine x plus c. And so that would be the final answer to that integral. Next, we have the integral of two times secant squared x plus nine times cosecant x times cotangent x. And so in this case, it's going to be important to remember that the integral of secant squared x is going to be equal to tangent x plus c, and the integral of cosecant x times cotangent x is equal to negative cosecant x plus c. And so these are going to be important to use in this integral. And so we'll have that this integral is equal to two times the integral of secant squared x, which we said is tangent x. So we'll have tangent x plus nine times the integral of cosecant x cotangent x, which is negative cosecant x. So we'll have negative cosecant x, and then we need to remember to add c. And so if we simplify this, we'll have that this is equal to two times tangent x minus nine times cosecant x plus c. And that is the final answer to that integral. And so as you can see, it's going to be very important that you remember your integration rules for trig functions. And so just a little tip, if you already know the derivative of trig functions, you can just reverse that to find what the integral would be, right? The derivative of tangent x is secant squared x, so the integral of secant squared x would be tangent x. All right, so just kind of keep that in mind as you go about these trig integrals. But before we end this video, let's go over one more example dealing with some trig functions. All right, so for our last example, we have the integral of sine x divided by cosine squared x. And this is the most complicated one we've looked at so far in terms of trig functions because this is going to require some manipulation to our function here inside the integral. And so the first thing I'm going to do is split up our denominator. And what I mean by that is we're gonna rewrite this to be equal to the integral of one over cosine x times sine x divided by cosine x, right? If you were to multiply these two together, you would have cosine squared x on the bottom and sine x on the top. And so it's the same thing as what is up here. And then of course, don't forget to multiply by dx. And so all I did was pull out this one over cosine x from our function. And so now it's going to be important that you remember your trig identities, right? What do we know about one divided by cosine x? Well, we know that secant x is equal to one over cosine x. And so we can rewrite this to be secant x. So we'll have that this is equal to the integral of secant x. And then what is sine x divided by cosine x? Well, we know that tangent x is equal to sine x divided by cosine x, right? That's another trig identity. And so we can rewrite this to be tangent x. So we have secant x times tangent x dx. And then this is actually one of our trigonometric rules for integration. We know that the integral of secant x tangent x is equal to secant x plus c, right? Because the derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x, and so it only makes sense that the integral of secant x tangent x would be equal to secant x and then plus c. And so this is the final answer to this integral and the last example for this video. So hopefully you found these examples to be helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. And so I will see you next time.